reaching out to religious institutions mm -hmm. also uh, to complement, you know, maybe what's you know what's being proposed, you know, at the right. school level too. Um, well, we I mean, want this in, in all know, schools. Uh, is there any broader? Do you feel like they play a role also? Oh, absolutely. Because in this bill, it also mentions that pub non-public schools and religious schools should also be, you know, uh, in tune with this bill. And uh, one of the things that's uh, going to happen, and I'm just going to digress for a minute, that Governor Christie is um, interested in certain aspects of education. And one of the things that he wants is a bill to be passed called the Scholarship Opportunity Bill. And the other one is that he wants many, many authorizers of charter schools. Now, these are going to really impact on public schools. Our, uh, a charter school is a public school. It gets 90% of its funding from uh, the property taxes, but their curriculum is not necessarily the same curriculum that you would get in the regular public school. And um, the uh, Scholarship Opportunity Act is uh, an act that um, businesses in this state will be allowed to put money into a fund um, and that will be deducted from their taxes that they pay to the state. And that the way this bill is set up right now, it's a five-year pilot program, but if it's successful, it could escalate. Um, any parent of a child in one of the um, underprivileged areas can apply for $8,000 for a, an elementary school child, $11,000 for a uh, high school child, and they can then use that money to send the child to a private, a yeshiva, a parochial school, whatever they want. And that raises a question in my mind because being a public school educator, <clears throat> I think of our public schools as a microcosm of our society. And I want everybody to get along with everybody. That's one of the reasons why this bullying thing. How are we going to you know, know people of other ethnicities, other religions, other races, if we are gonna put them in these separate schools? Now, a lot of these charter schools want, there's uh, two that just happen to be uh, okay. Uh, one is in Englewood, and it's called a Hebrew Immersion School, okay? And uh, they have applications for Russian schools, for Chinese schools, for, you know, all. And so if we have all people of one religion or all eth one ethnicity, how are they even going to get together and realize that we're all the same? You know, I mean, we all love our families. We all want, you know, to be safe. We all want to have friends. And I don't know if the, these, these ideas are, are particularly good, but. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's all right. I, I wasn't going in that direction okay. as far as the schools are concerned, but I certainly bullying has been like a, a major topic, you know, for the last number of years, and, and especially lately, you know, you're hearing more and more about right. it. Uh, but I, I, I guess my question is, um, certainly the schools are starting to get concerned with it, but, but I don't hear like religious leaders, okay, uh, talking about it. Or, I don't either. You know, or, you know, even, you know, I, I know my kids go to Sunday school, but I don't think the topic has ever come up, you know, mm -hmm. at this point. So how do you get the word out, you know, to that type, that community also? And I don't mean, you know, charter schools. I, Personally, I'm opposed to charter schools. Well, I'm yeah. being a public educator, I'm not exactly a big fan of myself. <laughs> and certainly I'm not a big fan of the Scholarship Opportunity Act because, I mean, that, that's either going to further separate kids, as far as I'm concerned. Other people have very different views from me on that thing. I don't know. I think that maybe we have to, you know, get some of our, I don't know if they still have, um, you know, these associations where rabbis, priests, pastors get together and talk about, you know, different issues that their congregations you know have but it used to be but I don't know if that still is in place today but it certainly is something that needs to be addressed but as I said I don't find large numbers of children um, going to any kind of religious instruction and I think that's to the detriment of you know our, um, our ethical uh, you know beliefs in this country and, and if you don't see if you don't think it's wrong you don't have any problem doing it and we're not teaching them. And, and now always the onus goes on the schools to do this, when a lot of this stuff really should be done in the home. But it's not, unfortunately. Yeah. Hi, Diane Cassari. Um, in this bill, I've had a bullying experience with my child at, in the Portland school system. Well, she was bullied by another child. 
when I got involved, I tried to work with the teacher. It wound up to the point I had to go to the principal. But then the bullying turned. The teacher turned on my child. The yeah. principal bullied me. And then my husband and I went the next step to the super, assistant superintendent. Then we got bullied there. You know, and this whole thing became a vicious circle of bullying. And we wound up pulling our child out of the Fortney school system. And, you know, what in this bill will give parents somewhere to go? Because in tr being trapped in the system is no help. You see, I have a problem with the bill because the intentions are very good, but the implementation is something that I think is far too difficult. I've heard so many stories recently of, um, from teachers um, you know, who are being intimidated by their principal, their supervisors. Um, I, I have heard um, a lot of retaliation being taken against certain educators by board of education people. And uh, you know you don't want to think that that's true, but unfortunately it is true. And uh, uh, as I said, I've heard stories. I have. I'm not an eyewitness to things and stuff like that. But I mean, because I'm an educator, people from all over the place come and tell me, you know, horror stories about what has been happening. So although those issues are addressed in this bill, I don't know how they're going. I mean, it's like you know, um, one of the parts of the bill says that all bullying um, attempts or all bullying situations should be reported. Now, as I said to you before, we're supposed to report any kind of vandalism, any kind of you know criminal activity, and I don't think that it gets reported. Not in my school, you know. That, that, I mean, that's the attitude because when they put out the report card on the schools, and you've seen the report cards come out, you know, every year about you know how the school ranks and everything. Um, uh, they don't want that um, on their record. And so that's a very big detriment, you know, to, you know, that bill being um, implemented. And I empathize with you because you're not alone. Anybody else? Doesn't have to be about bullying, I'll answer anything. <laughs> Because if the bullying occurs, like in her case, mm -hmm. with the teacher, she goes to the principal, she's bullied by the principal, yeah. who do you go to? You go to the administration, they also bully you. That's I was bullied by them, That's right I in know. front of open, <laughs> open, uh, open uh, <laughs> things. Uh, and I didn't even pro uh, provoke anything. I happened to be at a meeting when somebody else walked in who was in a very high position so do you complain to that person who bullies himself? Well, there, there are all Where kinds do you of, go? Okay, um, the, I guess you have to follow the chain of command. And after that, it's the county superintendent. But um, I would, uh, in, in certain instances, uh, contact the Department of Education, okay? And they have different um, uh, departments and certainly um, you know, I know some of the people down there, and uh, you know, certainly they should be able to um, put uh, some pressure on the people who put pressure on you. Okay, and uh, right now we do not have a, a commissioner that has been um, approved, but uh, Chris Surf is going to be, I think, eventually the commissioner. And uh, uh, I've spoken to him once, and he seems to be a very um, approachable, uh, you know, person. And uh, certainly, you know, if there are instances, and certainly with this bullying, you know, this, this has got to be a priority. But who knows where to go? You call my office. <laughs> uh, how many people know to call your office? Well. There are people, people don't know what to do. I know. And it has to be publicized on what to do, where to go, Okay, now one of the things that's happening, which, uh, and, and uh, how many people in here have computers? Computers, okay. Um, you've got to learn to use the computer. It's absolutely essential in this day and age. And um, if I can do it, trust me, you can do it. <laughs> and one of the things that we're doing is putting up websites so that you can go, like for example, suppose you wanna look this bill up and you wanna read it in its entirety. All you have to do is type in New Jersey, njlegislature.org, okay? And this, um, this uh, screen comes up, okay? And then it'll say, like, um, 
do you know the bill? It'll say keywords, so you put bullying in, okay? And then you push search, and then all the bills, and there are four of them that deal with bullying will come up, and then you could click on that, and then you'll get the whole bill. And um, uh, it'll say, find your legislator, okay? So then you click on find your legislator, then it says alphabetical list, and then you find like uh, um, Jerry Cardinale, or Joan Boss, or you know whoever you wanna find out in what district you live. Uh, Loretta Weinberg, um, and uh, then you, they'll give you the office number and uh, you know the address if you want to go see them personally. And so, I mean, the the computer is your friend, okay? And that's where and all of the agencies, like all the departments in the Department of Education, should be listed. You, you go Department of Education, and then all of the information comes up, okay? I mean, everything is on the computer if you just use it. Not all offices as kind and as accommodating as your office. I know. That, that <laughs> is a British <laughs> understatement, okay? I mean, that was put in a polite way. I mean, I, uh, because uh, education and autism uh, issues are something that I've worked on all, you know, all, all of my life, actually. Um, uh, people from all over the state will contact my office if they have a problem with an education issue or a, an issue with autism. And I get a little chagrined when somebody from my district uh, calls another legislator and they won't help them. They'll say, well, you, you go talk to Joan Voss and stuff like that. Like, I help everybody, that's my job, you know? I mean, I don't care if you have a problem and I can help you, then, you know, that's what I like to do. But this is not, see, I'm a, it, the legislature is supposedly a part-time job, okay? I work seven days a week, I really do. Um, and uh, because I love what I do, and, and that's, you know, and, uh, but some of the legislators have, uh, are lawyers, or are doctors, or, you know, um, they have other, you know, jobs, and so they really are part-time, okay, and um, I have a wonderful staff. I mean, if you ever called my office, I have two of the most wonderful women working for me that, uh, you know, will give you the shirt off their back if, you know, you needed it, so. Absolutely. Any questions about anything? The, the school, the latest on the TV today was the child, I don't, I think was very young, brought a gun to school. So now the Board of Education of that school is suspending the child for a year at home, going to be educated at home for a year. So what do you do about this gun control? I realize they spoke about knives and all, but it seems like guns are going to be the thing of the future where they're all bringing them in. One of the things, I mean, everybody is, of course, concerned either for guns to be uh, illegal or to be legal or to be illegal. Um, the criminals are always going to get guns. They are always going to get guns. So, I mean, I personally am not for gun control. The Second Amendment is, you know, very clear that, you know, we have the right to bear arms. But you need to have a license, you have to be trained, and you have to, you know. But um, with the gangs and stuff like that, I mean, just, I read an article um, in Texas that Americans were selling guns to the Mexican drug cartels to use against Americans. I mean, you know, and no law is gonna stop that. I mean, you have to be very pragmatic about things. I mean, I'm, I'm very logical about things. I always try to think of the ramifications. I mean, there was a, a law passed, many laws are passed with good intentions, but people don't think of the big picture. Uh, there was a law passed last year uh, that asked that, that young people put a red uh, square on their license, yes. okay? Yes. And a lot of parents called my office and said, this is awful because this is like kind of targeting the kids, the profiling the kids. I mean, you know, it, it makes it easy for them to get stopped for a infra traffic infraction. Um, many parents were very afraid that kids would go to a shopping mall. I mean, we, we have parking lots the size of, you know, 20 football fields around some of these malls. And that if you had that little sticker on, um, that a uh, predator might, you know, attack the child. And so they didn't want to do it. The fine was very minimal. But I have to tell you that I go to many, many schools. I have yet to see one of those red stickers on any of the cars because uh, the kids take them off. And this is, I like Thomas Jefferson. You all know Thomas Jefferson. He said, the government that governs least governs best. And so before you start passing a whole bunch of laws. <laughs> I know, so do I. 
Um, I, I don't want a lot of laws. I want laws that are good and that are enforced. And if you're not going to enforce them, then don't pass them. Do you think a, a lot of kids in the school realize that some of the things they may do in a playful fashion, they think, like posting naked or semi-naked uh, pictures on the internet, that that actually uh, constitutes a federal felony? Mm -hmm. No, they don't know. They're not taught about that. And uh, uh, there was um, a situation, uh, as I said, with this uh, Tyler Clemente, where you know he was uh, um, videoed, you know, in his room, and. Uh, uh, I mean, this is an invasion of privacy. It is a, it's an offense, it, it, not only a federal offense, but just an offense against humanity. And these kids don't realize it. I don't know uh, how much uh, the two students who are responsible are going to be you know, chastised for what they did. That child is dead, and he's not the only one there. There have been several suicides that I'm aware of, you know, because the kids can't handle it. And they have no place to go. And every parent can't afford a therapist. And all therapists aren't going to be able to deal with, you know, because sometimes the, the child is so uh, embarrassed that they won't even um, admit to it. And they just become, as you pointed out, uh, they, their personality changes. They become more and more reclusive. And, you know, finally they figure life is not worth living. And we've got to stop that, you know. And this is an attempt. And as I said, it's only an attempt. But uh, we have a lot of work to do.